Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Barrett, and this video is intended for my patients exclusively. If you've had surgery by another surgeon, please make sure to follow up with that surgeon for particular details about your surgery. And if you're having a medical emergency, please dial 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. Congratulations, you've just had a fat transfer procedure to the breast and liposuction. Now, there's a couple things I want you to keep in mind. Overall, you're gonna do great. The breasts are gonna be really swollen at first and you're gonna look down and you're gonna see lots of bruising and redness. That is completely normal, don't freak out. That gets better over time. One of the most important things to do after your procedure the same day is drink lots of fluids, Gatorade, water, soups, whatever it may be. If you get dehydrated after your procedure, which is very common, you might need IV fluids and have to get hospitalized. So make sure you start right away, stay ahead of it, and know when you're peeing on a regular basis that that is a good sign that you have enough fluids on board. It's important to know that your breasts are going to be bigger than what they're actually going to be once everything settles down. It generally takes about three months for you to see your final results for your breasts. Don't get too excited at how they look now because it will go down, okay? You'll still have a nice result, but they won't be as big because we're gonna lose about 20 to 50% of the fat that we transfer. It's actually very normal to have swelling extending down to the genital area if you had any liposuction on the upper body. This is normal for men to have a scrotal swelling and normal for females to have significant bruising and vulvar swelling as well. You might also get bruising and swelling extending down into the legs away from the actual liposuction sites. This is also very normal. The swelling can last easily up to three months to six months in certain areas. Don't expect your liposuction results to look good right away. For at least two weeks, it's gonna actually look worse before it looks better. Is it normal to have some numbness? Yes, it is normal. That happens after every liposuction procedure, no matter what part of the body, it eventually comes back. It's normal to feel slightly anxious or depressed the first week or two after your operation. Don't worry, this is a normal reaction to any surgery and gets better with time and support. You're going to experience a lot of drainage from your access sites, that is normal. Make sure you don't sleep on any fancy sheets tonight and put protective towels down before you go to bed so you don't ruin the bedding that you might have. It's normal for this fluid to look either clear or slightly bloody or even a tiny bit of blood. It generally subsides within 24 hours. For your breasts, don't have anything compressive on them for at least two weeks. Remember, those little fat cells need to survive, and if you compress them, they get less blood flow to the area, all right? So no compression of the chest, no lying on your, on your stomach, no tight bras or anything restrictive in that area for two weeks. You can also take a shower 24 hours after your operation. You can get everything wet. I do not want you to take a bath, hot tub, swimming, or uh, getting in a body of water like, a, like the ocean or a jacuzzi. That just basically invites bacteria in. The pressure of the water can cause an infection. Shower is okay, standing water is not okay. Overall, you wanna be very healthy after your operation. Meditation to help lower your stress, okay? Smokers, um, you can't smoke for at least six weeks. For alcohol, uh, people that like to drink wine or drink beer, there's no alcohol consumption for the next two weeks. That's going to decrease your ability to respond to any infection. Now, you gotta remember that little patch behind your ear. Take that off as soon as you get home, but don't rub your fingers on your eye after you do so. If you leave it on, you will get blurry vision. Not a big deal, just take it off when you're ready. I want you to take the antibiotics as soon as you get home. The Keflex, you take one pill four times a day, spaced out every six hours. Don't wake up in the middle of the night to take it, all right? Take one before you go to bed, one when you wake up, until the bottle is empty. Now, if it's clindamycin, it's one pill three times a day uh, until the bottle's empty. Remember, all the antibiotics need to be taken their full course. The only time I run into infections is when people don't take the full course of the antibiotics as prescribed, so make sure you do that. Next thing is the colase. Take one pill twice a day until you have a bowel movement. Once you're done with that, you no longer need to take the colase. All these medications can be taken on an empty stomach, so take them right away. So I wanna to talk to you about some products that you should be taking after your surgery. It's really important to help you heal and help manage your symptoms. The first one I love is CBD, okay? I recommend this product, Wild Health CBD. You take a full dropper, put it in underneath your tongue right when you get home, and a full dropper right before you go to bed. You can actually increase as needed. You will sleep like a baby, and it'll actually calm your anxiety and calm down your pain to a manageable level. Magnesium is a great supplement for three main reasons. First, it helps control the muscle spasms that you get can be experienced as pain after surgery. Second, it helps with constipation, helps keep 
you regular. And the third, it helps you sleep at nighttime. The best way to take this is two of these capsules at nighttime right before you're about to go to bed. Arnica, this is a product we recommend. It has Arnica and bromelain in it, so that helps the swelling go down naturally and it helps the bruising. What else do you need to take? Well, there's a product I also recommend. It's called Heal Fast. It's a vitamin supplementation that's designed to help you heal right after the surgery so that your body has the necessary nutrients to heal. You need to take five of these twice a day. I know that's a lot, but you need all of these nutrients to heal and to detox your body from the anesthesia. The other product is Masslimes. It has a whole host of enzymes, digestive enzymes. You wanna take four of these pills with every meal to help break down the food and help decrease your body's inflammation so that you heal faster. You can absorb the nutrients and it decreases inflammation in your body. This stuff has been proven to speed up your recovery. It is a must if you're gonna have any surgery by me. Lastly, scar gel. Pick up the Scanuva scar gel. You want to use this on your incision twice a day. The reason why I like it, it's got silicone and a bunch of other fetal growth factors that help the incision heal. So right around two weeks, you can start to undergo adjuvant therapies such as venous legacy skin tightening treatment, which has pulsed electromagnetic fields. Make sure you ask about that. It's a series of eight treatments. It feels wonderful, speeds up your healing, and optimizes your liposuction result. In addition to that, we also recommend lymphatic massage that can start at two weeks if you feel up to it. A lot of our patients swear by it, and it helps their swelling improve immediately. If you feel in the areas of the liposuction on the flanks, they might feel areas of knots and firmness. You want to massage those twice a day in circular motions. I tell people if you take a shower, hop in the shower, massage, three times in the area just to let it settle in and that will help those little knots from the liposuction resolve faster. We recommend that you get one of our post-op recovery kits. It has everything you can possibly imagine you'll need after surgery, including gauze, medical supplies in here, saline, hand sanitizer, sleep mask, earplugs, you name it. It is personally picked out by me so that you have everything you need to heal and recover and take care of your body after surgery. Liposuction garments are there for comfort, they're not necessary, and they won't impact your final result, okay? So at the end of the day, if your compression garment is absolutely killing you or causing blisters or causing a rash, just take it off, it's no big deal. There's no requirement to have compression for optimal final results. It just gets you there a little bit faster and helps you with comfort. I want to talk briefly about steri strips. These are covering your incisions. If they fall off, no big deal. You want to replace it with a band aid, all right? Now, sometimes your body swells with the steri strip on it. And if that happens, it can form a blister, all right? And if that blister happens, that's okay. Leave it alone. You can put antibiotic ointment on it twice a day, and we will remove the steri strip in the office. If you get an allergy, it develops a severe rash that's red and insanely itchy, okay? It happens on all the areas where you see this steri strip. If that happens, remove all your steri strips, wash with gentle soap and water, and take Benadryl and Claritin to help ease the symptoms. If you have any questions, give the office a call. We close your incisions in multiple layers. The deeper layers are using absorbable sutures to hold your wound together. Sometimes your body extrudes those and spits them out in a, in a slight inflammatory reaction. And if that happens, it's not a big deal. It happens to about 20% of our patients. If you do see that happening, give us a call. We can take it out in the office, or if you feel comfortable, you can pull it gently with a pair of tweezers and trim it with beauty scissors so that it dives down below the skin incision and then cover with antibiotic ointment for a few days or steri strip. If you've had neck liposuction, try to keep your garment on for at least three days and then you can wear it at nighttime for the remainder of the week. It's important to control that swelling, but if it's absolutely uncomfortable, it's not entirely necessary. You'll have two little incisions under here that might leak a little bit of fluid. Try to keep the steri strips on them. It's important to note that you could have weakness in the corner of your smile that is temporary. At most, it'll last maybe six to eight weeks, but it will get better. What that looks like is one side might be a little bit weaker than the other side. Again, that's completely normal and will return to function, so don't freak out about that. In addition, after a week or two, you might actually notice some firmness underneath your neck area. That that is normal. You want to do a little massage, circular massage, twice a day under the area and the stiffness to soften that up. If you've had arm liposuction, make sure that you have your compression sleeves on. If they are cutting off circulation to your hands and your hands are getting swollen or you're getting numbness in your hands, take them off. No big deal, okay? The compression is there to help prevent swelling, but if you don't have it on, it's not going to hurt your result.
If you've had thigh liposuction and you have the tet hose on, make sure that they are up as far as they can. You wanna make sure that any compression garment you're wearing doesn't have a groove developing in any of the seams. If it does, loosen it up, and if it still does, then just take it off. You can walk around right away, and I encourage you to do so. That helps prevent blood clots collecting in your legs. You can walk around three times a day for the first two weeks, and I encourage you to do that. Don't walk more than a mile. And then after two weeks, you can actually resume normal activity and increase as your body tolerates. All right, don't get right back into it running a marathon, but use your body as a guide and slowly ramp your normal uh, activities back up to where they used to be. If you're having a fever over 101 degrees, give us a call. Any, the body temperature varies anywhere from 97 to 99 degrees, that's normal. But once it goes over 101 degrees, that's a potential problem. Also, if you have any significant bleeding or purulent drainage from any of your incisions, let us know. A little bit of bleeding is okay. A little bit of clear fluid is totally normal from a liposuction procedure, that's okay. But if you're getting a lot of bleeding or swelling in the abdomen area, that could be a sign of a hematoma. Now I'm talking like um, grapefruit size swelling, okay, not talking about generalized swelling. If you haven't urinated in 12 hours after your surgery, you need to give us a call or call 911 or your nearest emergency room. If you are persistently nauseous, vomiting, and you can't keep anything down, you need to give us a call, call 911, or go to the nearest emergency room. Congrats on your natural breast augmentation procedure. Again, we used your own body's fat to transfer to your breasts and you're gonna love your results. Follow all the instructions in this video and you're gonna do great. Make sure to tag us in your recovery journey, all right? Hashtag Barrett Recovery is the best way to share your experience so other people can learn from your journey.